So, you want to know about certifications in cybersecurity? Well, you're in the right place because that is exactly what I'll be discussing in today's video. I will be focusing on a CompTIA certification and just for some requisite, CompTIA is one of the world's leading IT trade associations with worldwide recognition. And since its foundation, it's become a leader in vendor neutral certification and has issued over 2 million certificates worldwide. CompTIA is most known for three of their certifications, which are A+, Network+, and Security+. And as a tech professional or cybersecurity student, odds are that you've probably heard at least of one of these three. They all are well-regarded certifications and many people going into cybersecurity ask which one of these is most important. However, it mainly depends on your knowledge and where you are at in your career. So in today's video, I will be going through A+. However, I do have other videos on Network Plus and Security Plus if you're interested and the links are down below in the description. So let's get on with talking about A+. Now the CompTIA A+, certification is an entry level certification for the IT industry. It's issued by CompTIA as I previously mentioned and is widely accepted as an industry standard certification often used to start a career in IT. This certification is set out a bit different to the other ones that I've mentioned before, which is Network Plus and Security Plus. So you'll know that if you have previously watched those videos or you know what's included in them. So it's different because the course series requires candidates to pass two exams, Core 1 and Core 2, which you can see on the screen now. And the exam itself contains multiple choice questions with both single and multiple responses, drag and drops, and performance-based questions, which overall takes you to 90 minutes with 90 questions. And then to look at the pass mark, you will need to get at least 675 out of 900 for Core 1 to pass, and for Core 2, you will need to score at least 700 out of the 900 to pass that part of the exam. And while there aren't any official prerequisites to sit the a exam, it is recommended that candidates have at least 9 to 12 months hands-on experience in, say, a role that's to do with the help desk or a support technician, just to give you that foundational knowledge. However, it is not required, so if you don't have that but you feel confident going for it, then you can go ahead and sit the exam. So, now that you know what's involved in terms of the exam, let's look at the content. So first up, we'll look at Core 1. The first topic includes mobile devices, which basically means you'll learn about installing and configuring laptops and mobile devices. Then we have networking, which means you'll learn about types of networks and connections. So for example, TCP slash IP, Wi-Fi, and just things like that. And then we have hardware, which looks at identifying, using, and connecting devices and hardware components. And we have virtualization and cloud computing. So looking at comparing cloud concepts and setting up client side virtualization. And then we have finally hardware and network troubleshooting, which means you'll be looking at solving issues with devices and networks. Now that covers core one. Let's take a look at core two. So first up, we have operating systems, which means you'll look at installing and configuring Windows operating systems and understanding Mac OS, Linux, mobile OS, just things like that. And then we have security. So you'll look at identifying and protecting against vulnerabilities in both devices and networks. And then we have software troubleshooting, which looks at resolving issues with applications on PC and mobile devices even including security support. And then finally for core two, we have operational procedures, which looks at the best practices for safety, sustainability, communication, and professionalism. So you can see covered in both core one and core two is a lot of content. However, don't worry if you're not familiar with any of these concepts or you're thinking that might be quite difficult because that's what this certification is here to help you to do, is here to help you to grasp these concepts and make sure you understand them for your future career path. So now that we've covered the topics and you know what's involved in the exam, let's look at some jobs you can get after sitting the A plus certification. We have help desk analyst, IT technician, technical support specialist, system support specialist, IT support manager, IT server technicians. 
Now, obviously, they are just a few of the many jobs you can get after applying for the A plus certification. So if you're interested in any of them or you're looking to head towards those careers, then this is definitely a certification for you. So now that you have all that information, what should you do now? So deciding if you need to take this certification will depend on where you are at in your career. If you're looking to enter the IT space and want to show employers that you want to get your foot in the door in IT or cybersecurity, then I say definitely get the A plus certification as it will cement those foundations in your head and you will definitely help you later down the line. However, if you've been over that content and you're thinking, I already know all this, that stuff that I've already covered in my job or I've learned before, and you already have a few years of IT experience and you're slightly confident in that area, then I would recommend looking towards Network Plus and Security Plus, which I also have videos on and are linked down below. If that's been useful, do check out my Instagram. It's imentor with two underscores. And please do leave a like on the video as it massively helps it out and tells me that you like this type of content.